for Nuapai Air Base, Auckland, home to five squadrons, 1,100 personnel and their aircraft. While most are still waking up, Engineering Officer Charanjit Singh is out inspecting the aircraft. It's part of a year's on-the-job training and he's one of just 1% of the New Zealand Defence Force regular force who identifies as Asian. Joining the Air Force is a childhood dream for Indian-born Charanjit, but one that nearly didn't happen. It was always at the back of my mind. My maternal uncle, he was an Air Force, Indian Air Force, who died as a volunteer. And when I was young, he used to take me around on different bases, so kind of fascinated with the aircrafts. But later on, um, uh, you know, priorities you know, do change, and parents decided that now uh, they, they want to see me as an engineer, so OK. An engineer on Civvy Street, that is. His father's reservations about seeing the only son in the family enter the armed forces were reason enough for Charanjit to drop the idea. Until years later, he moved to New Zealand and saw an Air Force recruitment ad, Engineers Wanted. Back home, never thought about it and suddenly saw this opportunity and said, hey, give it a go. And here I am. I thought I can do academically well, but I was always worried that physical side will let me down. But somehow managed it well. And that part, I'm thoroughly enjoying it because being physically active is it's like, you know, it's great. I mean, it keeps you fit, the job is great. What else one wants? Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. I've um, just topped up the oxygen pressure so that we've got enough oxygen for yeah. international flights. Right. Deployed yeah. the, the Physical training isn't something most engineers have to worry about, but it's high on the list for anyone jumping into Air Force life. Charanjit's training will equip him to be part of an elite team of engineering officers managing all aspects of RNZAF aircraft, their mechanical, avionics and armament systems. As part of 40 Squadron this year, his focus is on their two Boeing 757s and five C-130 Hercules. Both are long-range aeroplanes flying passengers and cargo around the world for exercises and operations, often in volatile areas. While jumping out of a Hercules at 12,000 feet is not Charanjit's job, it's his team that keeps these people in the skies, wherever, whenever. His is a highly skilled role with no room for error. Decisions are made under pressure and mistakes of judgment could cost lives. Go to almost everywhere in the world. I mean, they, they go to Afghanistan, they go to UK, Australia, East Timor. So wherever there is a requirement, they go. You have to be very cal calm, cool, and collected. I uh, think that's sort of a quality I have, I feel. And uh, other thing, uh, uh, good listening capability. Helps also, I think, uh, wearing turban uh, brings a different perspective to the overall nature of the work, so yes. While turban-wearing Sikhs have long had a visible presence in the RAF and the Indian Air Force, Charanjit is the only turban-wearing officer in New Zealand's Air Force. Initially, I was a little bit apprehensive because obviously um, wearing a turban. Uh, but in the training itself, I've been treated very well right from the day when I've been asked that uh, what my special requirements are as far as my food goes and what clothing requirements I need. And everything was provided to me. Soon after arriving in the force, Charanjit was asked to make a presentation to his peers to educate and inform them about his religion and identity. Uh, was initially I felt, oh, well, how should I compile that sort of information? was kind of daunting, although I can explain. But at the same time, I was happy inside that there is opportunity for me to explain why I look like this, what are the reasons behind it. And that was great because the 10 minute of presentation kind of opened up everything. People came to knew about me and they had questions and they asked me the question and suddenly it became a part of the family. Suddenly that identity of me wearing turban went away as such in general perception that, yep, no, Wears the uniform, he's part of us, and that was great. And same sort of feeling I have here as well, on the squadron as well. Um, he's a key member of the team, he uh, has no problems relating to, to any um, age or, or rank, uh, which is a key part of, of how we do business. We're a pretty tight team, uh, we deploy often to uh, sometimes inhospitable locations, so obviously it's a pretty key, um, key aspect to be able to work uh, in that sort of environment. CJ um, certainly uh, has no problem with that. CJ, as his colleagues call him, now halfway through his year at Whanuapai, is one of a hundred who live at the airbase. 
his wife and two children keep home fires burning in Wellington, but they're never far from his mind. They are very, very appreciative of what I'm doing, uh, especially my wife. Um, uh, she's the one motivating factor um, for me to join Air Force. Uh, I was kind of thinking about whether should I or should I not. But then uh, she's the one who said, oh, well, it was your dream, why don't you give it a try? So, yeah, thanks to her that I'm what I'm doing today. Uh, it is hard, it is hard, especially when our children are growing up. My daughter is in year 11, so obviously with her studies she needs my help. And I'm also missed the opportunity to go with my son and watch his game. He can't cheer from the sidelines, but regular travel home and emails make the distance seem shorter. For this engineering officer, the chance to fulfill his own childhood dream in this, his adopted country, is something he deems a privilege. But from an immigrant's perspective, I mean, it's, it's, just, it's something, um, I would say, exceptional because you come to a country, you adopt the country, and then country gives you an opportunity and uh, it's an opportunity we are representing the country, which is great. So when I wear uniform, especially when on my shoulder it says New Zealand, it's a great feeling, yeah.